Ha ha ha! Because Connor Bedard is not going to be a Vancouver Canuck. Let's focus on the next best thing. Could we realistically see this happen? I don't know. But in today's video, what we're going to do is talk about the guy who, in my opinion, is the second best prospect in this draft, but who is so polarizing of a prospect that he might not be taken anywhere near the top of the 2023 class. So, Today we're talking about Matvey Mishkov, and I know a lot of Canadians fans that are fans of this channel are going to be tuning into this video saying, wait a minute, Lego, stop. You can't be doing this, man. You just made a whole bunch of videos talking about Mishkov with the Habs at number five. Why are you talking about this Vancouver thing at 11? You know it's not going to happen. You know it's not worth talking about. And meanwhile, we have the Canucks fans coming into the comments saying, Lego, you need to make a video about prospects the team could realistically take at 11. Not this guy. This guy's not going to be there. Why are you making a video about him? Talk about Reinbacher. Talk about Dvorsky. Talk about Axel Sandin Pelika. Okay, calm down, folks. We can do that as the show goes on. We've got a lot of time before the draft comes and goes in July. And so when it comes to the topic of today's video, Matt V. Mishkov, there's a really interesting sort of thought process that has stirred up that I wanted to make this video and just kind of go over, because if you've been following the Canadians' videos, we've been talking about Mishkov at number five for the Habs, whether it's something the Canadians want to do, they don't want to do, why some teams would not want to take Mishkov. Long story short, there's a big list of reasons here. But Mishkov being Russian, Mishkov having a Russian contract signed till the end of 2026, these are all factors that are going to hold him back from being a top-of-the-line NHL prospect in comparison to if he was, let's say, in the OHL. Because when it comes to pure talent, he's very well up there. He's, in my opinion, the second best player in the draft. But just like other players in the past, like Cole Caulfield, who was taken a little bit later because he's too small, how far is Mishkov actually going to slip because of these factors that are, unfortunately, not in his control? Here's a tweet from Cam Robinson, which kind of sparked up this entire video in the first place. Will Matvey Mishkov fall in the draft? No one knows for certain, but I do know that there are several teams who expect him to be there after the first 10 picks. The risk is nearly as high as the upside. And that is why we're making this video here today, folks. Could Matt V. Mishkov slip to number 11, where the Vancouver Canucks will swoop in there and take the guy that no other team is brave enough to take? Matt V. Mishkov could be the answer here, and if he is available, the Vancouver Canucks need to take him. But, of course, that is so, so unlikely to happen. You need 10 teams to pass up on... Okay, one team is guaranteed to passing up on Mishkov, and that's Connor Bedard and the Blackhawks, but all these other teams, you need Anaheim to pass on him, you need the Columbus Blue Jackets to pass on him, you need the Canadians to pass on him at number five, you need Arizona, Philly, Washington, Detroit, and St. Louis, all to pass up on Mishkov, should this be the guy. And realistically, I mean, having one or two or three teams passing up on him, I could understand that at the top of the draft. With a guy like Leo Carlson, with a guy like Adam Fantilli, these players are talented enough where if you took them over Mishkov, you could make a debate as to why that would be the proper case. But for other players like Will Smith, for Dalibor Dvorsky, for Reinbacher, I feel like when it comes to talent and potential, Mishkov is over all of these guys. He's in a tier above most of them. So having him slip by, it's really going to be dependent on how much these teams value just the certainty with other prospects, how much they're dissuaded by the Mishkov Russian factor and his contract and the lack of control you're going to have in developing him over the next few years. But realistically, if all is said and done in 2020, no, not 2020, in 2045 or whatever, let's say it's been... How many? 22 years since these guys are drafted? These guys are now retired, 40 years old, whatever. If Matt Vey Mishkov has 700 goals in the NHL, it's not going to matter. Like, who cares with his development heading into the season? Of course, it matters because we don't know the future and we can't tell these things right off the bat in 2023. But there is such a talented prospect profile here that if he does become that, then I think you're laughing if you're a team that picks him up at the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 range even. 
But let's go out there and talk about some fantasy land for a little bit, because just in case Matvey Mishkov does slip to number 11, let's say he does, let's say Vancouver takes him. What happens then? Well, nothing happens right away because Mishkov is in the KHL till 2026. But once he does come over to Vancouver, assuming he is good and he's as good as we thought he's going to be, this player all of a sudden makes Brock Besser's job no longer needed. This player allows the team to let go of Connor Garland with no holds barred. Having Andre Kuzmenko and Matvey Mishkov as two right-handed Russian snipers on your team at the same time sounds phenomenal. And if there's a point in 2026, let's just say, where Kuzmenko maybe overstays his welcome, maybe he's not as good as he was this season anymore, maybe he doesn't get 40 goals in a year, maybe he drops down to 20. If you have Kuzmenko on that second line, playing with whoever it is available there, because, you know, you got Petey and Miller most likely going to be the top two centers on this team for the next decade, pretty much. If you've got Kuzmenko and Miller and whoever else on the wing, let's say Niels Hoglander, let's make it safe like that, then you could have yourselves a top six of Mishkov, Pedersen, Kuzmenko, Miller, Hoglander, and then whoever else you want to throw in there. Maybe Pod Colson. Let's round out the Russians there. Add another Russian player to the top if he's actually good enough to play there. If you still have one of the Bessers or the Garlands, then okay, they're going to be sticking around there too. But Matt Mishkov playing with Elias Pettersson sounds like a match made in heaven in the same way that Kuzmenko and Pettersson playing together also was. Not to mention that power play. You could have Kuzmenko on that bumper spot, down low spot, cycling the puck around the net, and Mishkov as the one time option on the left side, move Miller, I don't know, maybe into the middle, have Petey on the right side, and then of course that Quinn Hughes at the top of the umbrella manning the point. This could be a really lethal set of options if the Vancouver Canucks don't screw this up. But of course, it's tough to screw it up when Mishkov is probably going to be taken somewhere in the 5, 6, 7, 8 range anyway. But either way, just the hype for Mishkov over the years, how he was always compared neck and neck with Connor Bedard, how he was producing similarly to Bedard at certain tournaments, it's so difficult to try to undervalue just the talent that Mishkov has. I always say this, and I'm saying this in every video we talk about this guy, and it's getting annoying at this point, but at the Youth Olympic Games a few years ago, Matvey Mishkov was dubbed by the Olympics themselves as the next best Russian goal scorer since Ovechkin. And considering the talent of Russian players in the NHL, of course, you've got Malkin, you've got Kucherov, Kaprizov, Panarin, saying that Mishkov is supposed to be better than all these guys is a pretty big deal. And so, long term, if this guy does end up getting 600, 700 goals in his National Hockey League career, I don't think that should be seen as too much of a surprise. And if that's done with Vancouver, then hey, you've got yourselves the next best Russian player on this team since Pavel Bure, and that's no disrespect to Andrei Kuzmenko. You've just got to hope that 10 teams really do pass up on him, like some NHL scouts believe is going to be the case. And that's the thing. If NHL scouts really do believe that this is going to happen, then it's worth talking about. It's worth considering Matvey Mishkov being available at number 11 because we just don't know. It's as worthy of talking about as other players like Reinbacher or Dvorsky or, I don't know, Gabe Perot could be in there, Ryan Leonard. There are a lot of other prospects that could be around the range that the Canucks could draft, and Mishkov might be the best one there. It just depends on what the other teams are thinking. So you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this idea of Matt Mishkov coming over to Vancouver. Yeah, that's right, baby. I'm going for seconds because since Connor Bedard is not going to be a Canuck anymore, we've got to focus on the next best thing. What's the next best case scenario that's actually possible in this case? And in my opinion, it's Mishkov. If he's available past 10, the Canucks got to grab him. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.